Hi guys and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 here as Rangers. I hate to say that I have actually missed the Champions League draw here. To, um, so unfortunately we won't be able to see that taking place live. Fortunately though we did draw Benfica. So that's a winnable tie. Possibility of maybe reaching the quarterfinals. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves of course. But it's certainly a better draw. Tottenham came second in our group and ended up with Real Madrid. So top of that group was actually huge. Ended up with Benfica, so a game we can possibly win. But we need to put that to the backs of our minds now because we don't play that until February. And we are still... We're ahead, oh, we're not actually ahead of Celtic now. They've obviously played their games in hand. We're second place here. Yeah, Celtic have played their games in hand and are now one point ahead of us. So we're well embroiled in a title race now. And we need to make sure that when we do go and take on Benfica, we are actually top of the league and are going to retain our title. I've noticed for a couple of years in Football Manager, when you break Celtic's dominance, they never seem to manage to claw the title back. So it's actually interesting that they're given such a good go of it uh, here this season. They host St. Johnson just now. You'd expect them to get that win. We need to do the business against Gary Holt's Kilmarnock here. 12 wins and 2 draws is our record against Kilmarnock. Very, very strong, of course, against Killy. Uh, so we are going up against them just now. A thief off the bench due to suspension, of course. Uh, we'll bring Bednar check on us. But no, we won't. We'll bring on Morelos. I forgot he was in substitution slot number eight there for some weird reason. So Morelos will come in for Odson Edward. Cataldi is out for McGinn due to an injury. And other than that, we're going to stick with what we have. Or are we going to go with Manuel Riedel? Um we'll ah, it's difficult we'll take Cataldi off the bench yeah do you know what we'll bring Manuel Riedel in for Ivanildo Fernandez. so we'll go with Fulton Riedel Densewell Wallace Byron Borthwick Jackson McGinn Burjonas Horta Gallagher and Morelos we'll go with that today hoping to give Jordan Houston about half an hour or so out there today how is young Ryan Caddis getting on at Killy he's looking a decent player there he's very quick obviously he's not going to be good enough for us Technically and mentally he is lacking, but with such pace he'll be good for Kilmarnock, no doubt. Um, expect nothing but a win. Not a lot more to say. Encourage the boys, and here we go at Rugby Park. Denswell playing it to Gallagher now. And it goes back to Murray Wallace. So hopefully playing with this three at the back formation today, we should be very, very tight at the back. Solid, shouldn't give anything up here against Kilmarnock. And we can hopefully snatch ourselves a win as well. Falkirk 2 up already against Dundee United. Nothing happening here at Rugby Park. Celtic take the lead through Yuri Tillemans. We will demand more in the last 10 minutes of the first half. We've had three shots to kill his one and absolutely nothing has happened. And it's half time. Wow. Celtic 2 up through Alejandro Gomez. Nothing has happened at Rugby Park whatsoever. It's going to have to go through them for that kind of performance. And we will go to the 4-2-3-1 wide. We're going to have to now, aren't we? Um, we'll take off Wallace there. Uh, Wallace will come off for Pudence, who has done well recently. And Gallagher will come off for Dimitri Mitchell, who can play as a winger out there. And other than that, let's carry on here. Push forward, guys. Come on, we need to do something. Far more aggressive here in this second half. How is young Thomas Silva as well? They've got quite a lot of Portuguese players. Uh, Kelly, see, he's a very good player for Kilmarnock's level there on loan from Sporting Lisbon. We also have a Elder Silva who looks okay, I suppose. Okay, first piece of action. It's taken 50 and a half minutes. Byram, Horta. Back to Byram. McGinn flicks it to Horta. Angles are in. Mitchell's header is a really poor one. Tame effort. <coughs> Excuse me. And an hour gone. That is the best we've managed to offer. Silva's corner, Masterson heads it down and oh my god, we are 1-0 down and have all the guys to score the goal 
Gary Shirtliff. That is very close to being Gary Shirtlift. No, gave them to 70 minutes to try and do something for me. They didn't manage it. We're going to take off Sam Byram just now for odds on Edward. We're going to have to go more direct, of course. Morelos can be the advance forward. Odds on Edward supporting target man. Overload. And let's launch it. Not much more to say on this one. Take more risks. We'll go to a three at the back there. Two ball playing defenders and a covering centre back. And it's time to overload them. How is this young guy who's just came off the bench? He's on loan from Celtic. Of course he is. This will put us four points behind Celtic now after 18 games. We need to respond. McGinn, Edward cushions it back to McGinn. Scoops it in. Morelos heads it way over the bar. Way, way over the bar. And that's two half chances. And we've been really, really... Wasteful from them both. Kuna back to Shirtliff. Kuna has acres to thunder this one. At goal hits the bar and Riedel can clear. Jesus, it's nearly 2-0 to Kilmarnock there. Kilmarnock have scored and gone closer than we have all game. No. I don't see us getting it now. Fulton goes long. Maybe Edward. Edward doesn't even challenge. It's headed forward. Denswell almost gets in Riedel's way, but he does pick it up himself. But Jonas now, come on, drive forward, son. Plays it in. Edward looked offside. It's a great save for the keeper, though. It was not offside. Odds and Edward should score. But Dens whips it. It's bouncing around. Falls to Denswell. Back to Mitchell. Horta. We just kind of get a look at goal. He's had to go back to Burjonas. Horta, Riedel, I don't see he's getting anything from this now. I think Edward's chance was the chance. I think Kelly are going to survive for their 1-0. Or maybe make it worse. Silva, cut back, Kilty, Akers, bends it. Fulton saves. And Kelly have had opportunity to make... Do you know, Kelly deserve this. They haven't they snatched this. They absolutely deserve this. Silva whips it. Eventually away by Denswell, but there was a push on Hudson Edward. Three minutes added on. A minute and a half of those remain. Silva, Kilty, to hit another long range effort here. No, he gets into the box, plays it. Fulton easily catches it. Can Fulton launch it for an attack for Rangers here, maybe? Fulton does launch it. No, nah, and it's so easily won. Burjonas to Mitchell, though. Run, Mitchell! Oh, it's a terrible pass. Well, Edward's actually on it. Beats his man into the box. Shoots from a tight angle. Odds on Edward, 1-1. One, one. That is brutal for Kilmarnock. It's still not good enough for us, but it's a hell of a lot better than losing. Kuna to Kilty now takes a touch. Bends it well wide, and it's going to be one each. At least we remain within three of Celtic. I honestly feel I feel cheap for what we just did to Kelly. Kelly deserved the three points there easily. We were really poor. Really, really poor. Ryan Hardy doing it. How many goals does he have, man? Only eight? Feels like he scored more than that. Rangers rescue late draw and rescue really is the word. We need Leandro Letiri back or Alberto Chiacheri actually. We'll definitely be recalling one if not both in January. We need more firepower. Morelos has been off his game for a long time now. That's a problem. Do you know, I've noticed that actually with Morelos as we've played throughout the seasons here in the Rangers campaign. Morelos goes through periods where he's just unplayable and he bangs a goal in every single game. You just know he's going to score. Then he goes through a period after that where he kind of hit a coup in the arse with a banjo. It's a strange one. Very inconsistent. I suppose it's not entirely unfair. He seems to be like that in real life. 
And we are now three behind Celtic. Wonder if they've got any difficult game coming up, Celtic. They're away at Dundee United next. It's not the easiest game in the world, but you would obviously expect them to win every game pretty much the way they're playing. Uh, who the, is it still Paul Lambert there? It is indeed Paul Lambert, yeah. He's done well to, to resurrect them from the position they were in before. We're going to have to change this formation again. Ivanildo Fernandez won't be on the bench anymore. Um, he can come out just now. Jordan Houston can get that winger winger position back. A thief onto the bench. Mitchell goes back. Henderson goes back. And that's going to be what we have just now. Liam Henderson can come in for Tim Gallagher again. Is Gallagher training well this month? Nope. Absolutely nothing so far. So that's going to be the squad, I think, for the Dundee game. We need to get a strong victory over Dundee. We've been poor in the league for a while now. We've been doing wonders in the Champions League, but in the league we've been poor. I mean, we got a 1-0 over Hibs last time out. Drew with Partick before that. Then we beat Hearts. Drew, eh, sorry, lost against Hamilton before that. It's as if we're almost turning up in the league expecting to win now because we're doing well in Europe. And I'm actually going to take Houston out here for Pudence just because of Houston's fitness test there. He's got that fitness test not required in uh, in yellow there. So we're going to keep him out. Morelos will continue to play. Cataldi won't. It's a weird formation they're going with as well. We should be able to rip them down the flanks today, hopefully. Let's assertively say we should be winning this match. And I am actually going to give them the instructions to exploit the left and right flank today. We should have no problem managing that with the weird formation that they're playing. They're playing one left midfielder, one right midfielder, no wing backs, no full backs. So we should be able to double team them. Borthwick Jackson uh, and a thief. Is that a thief? It's Horta. Uh, Horta and Henderson. I forgot to move Horta, didn't I? Yeah. Well, Horta can play as an inside forward. Why not? Henderson to McGinn, out to Horta, the inside forward, taking on his man, beats him in, oh, and again, Morelos in a good vein of form gets across the man there and scores, Cameron Borthwick Jackson scores, does it count? It does count, an absolute fluke from Cameron Borthwick Jackson up and under, beats everybody and goes in, there you go, not even a minute gone, much better from us today, hey? I went to sleep a little bit after that. Padens, McGinn. Space out in the wing here if Berjonas can find Byram. And he goes to Henderson. Morelos now. Horta making a move. Goes to Horta. It's a good ball. Can Horta finish? He squares it. McGinn can finish though. 2-0. Not even 14 minutes gone. And you've got to think that we've got the win in the bag now. A good finish there by John McGinn. It was excellent play by Andre Horta. Clearly the accidental decision to play him as an inside forward is paying off. As it goes long to McCauley, who's a complete and utter pest. Borthwick Jackson, Burjonas, Henderson, go on son, move it quickly. McGinn, acres of space, Burjonas. Now the three of them seem to be toying with Dundee here. Henderson to Horta, who they can't cope with either. Hits a byline, squares it low. Morelos is even in on the action. And how good is Andre Horta looking on the left? Hitting the byline, squaring it back, 3 nothing after only 21 minutes. <sighs> Unfortunately, Lee Griffiths has Celtic ahead at Tannerice as well. Byram. Padence, can he get an assist? No, he goes back to Byram. Squares it easily away by Poole. Berjona should find Horta, who's found space again. Somehow keeps it in. Padence! Horta has three assists and even Daniel Pedence is in on the act. 
and I'm going to make a sub Henderson off for Gallagher. Let young Tim come into the squad today for a bit an hour's an hour's worth of action. Four nothing up after half an hour. Great performance, and we're eating into Celtic's goal difference lead. We're only one goal behind them now, as Poole lobs it easy for Denswell, for Jonas McGinn. Horta again, everything going through him just now. Oh, lovely disguised pass. Gallagher, can he whip it? Uh, it's deflected away. But Jonas picks it up though. Come on, get his five. Flick to Gallagher. Cut back. McGinn will rattle this. He does, and it's in. It's five. And Tim Gallagher gets his assist. See, this is better than what we did at Rugby Park. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Williams with the throw. Spence. Housel. Smith, come on, don't let them score. Ryan picks it up. Out wide. Wallace, come on, Byram. Oh, Byram wins it. Pedence now. Go quickly, Pedence. Over the top for Morelos. It's an excellent pass. Can we get six in the first half? Mm, doesn't it look like it? Nah, Scott Beam with an easy save for that kind of angle. Well, it's been a sensational first half performance. Stark contrast to Rugby Park where we created absolutely nothing here. We're just creating chance after chance. It looks like it could be a cricket score by the end of this. Even if Dundee had scored 100% of their shots, they'd still be four goals behind here. Excellent showing from us. Yeah, I'm very pleased to keep it going. I think that goes without saying. Um, we'll throw on Jordan Houston at right back just to get some match fitness. McGinn for Denswell. He'll play it back to McGinn. Riedel. Houston. Only thing that could make this any sweeter is we got news of a goal from Tannerice for Dundee United. Ho ho! And Jamie Robson scores for Dundee United. Gandhi finds pull now. Mads Beck playing it forward. Should be easy for the defence. No, McCauley's got free. Of course he has. McCauley's in. Shoots. Good save, Fulton. And we'll throw Mitchell back on again. Do you know, the fact that he set up that goal for Odson Edward with a perfect pass that I incorrectly called a poor pass, I think he deserves a little bit of a extended period of time in the team that doesn't mean he's going to start games don't get me wrong but he really needs to start playing more games because he's been a decent servant from us here uh, for us pardon me even if he's never going to exactly be a legend Smith stands it up for Macaulay but three defenders rise Macaulay beats them all but Fulton manages to claim that one just as easily as he did his first effort Horta now McGinn Gallagher play him in Gallagher scoops it for Morelos he's never beaten Wallace to it though Bain can clear then swell an easy ball down to Burjonas. We want some more goals here, but we definitely want to keep the clean sheet mainly. Gallagher losing it now as well. Oh, poor pass back. Morelos, 6. 6-0. 2 for Morelos. 2 for McGinn. 1 for Borthwick Jackson. 1 for Pedence. Incredible today. 3 assists for Andre Horta. One for Tim Gallagher. It's just it's been a perfect performance. This is the perfect attacking performance. And we've actually, not only have we ate into Celtic's goal difference, we've now turned it around. We are now actually two goals ahead of them. And it's only going to be a one-point gap by the looks of it. Looks like it's going to end one apiece up at Tannerice. 6 nil here, of course. Fulton's long ball picked up by Pudence. Could we get a seventh? I think it's asking a bit much here, but... You never know. Well, Morelos is across his man. Ah, just loses it. And it is going to end 6 nothing. We've kept out Macaulay for a change. Macaulay usually causes his bother. Horta for Gallagher. A couple of seconds left. Mitchell. And there you have it. 6 nothing. Simply sensational there. Oops. I think I handed that to the assistant by accident. But he's gave them the right team talk nonetheless. John McGinn with the man of the match. Playing today in place of the injured Danilo Cataldi. But there you have it. We're now one point behind, which is where we started the episode anyway. Morelos back in scoring form. 
it's decent. It's decent. We've had a good, we've had a decent run now, actually, for about what the the month of December, pretty much undefeated. Poor draw against Kelly, mind you. Poor draw against Partick as well. But Partick being down to ten men is a mitigating circumstances. Kelly uh, taking us to the death to score is not good stuff, man. I suppose on the one hand you will say in our past six games we've only conceded two goals and we've had four clean sheets. But we need to definitely be back to more attacking football more regularly. We will be playing with a 4-2-3-1 against Falkirk away from home at the Falkirk Stadium next time out. And then we'll be going uh, up against Celtic at Ibrox where I'm unsure what formation we'll play. We'll play that by ear as we come to it. So that's next time. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have done, please drop down below and leave a like on the video. It does help out the channel and I do greatly appreciate every single one of you that clicks that button. Uh, of course, to follow the series, and our, particularly our Champions League exploits now that we're in the last 16 with a winnable tie, of course you can subscribe to the channel, which I'd be eternally grateful for, but mostly I just want to thank you guys for watching, continued support for the channel, and I'll see you next time for Falkirk and Celtic.